Okay, so today we are doing voter's choice. Voter's choice means that I took a vote on my Twitter and people decided that they wanted to have a painting day today. So that's what we're doing. And you guys can vote. Um, I usually try to do them once a month where I ask people what they'd like to see and they vote. So since we're heading into the um, dead of winter here, well, for us, unless you're on the other side of the globe, I decided I wanted to do something nice and bright and colorful to kind of shake the winter blues. And I went with a very bright yellow. <laughs> this is just a bag. Um, if you can see it a little bit here but just a simple bag I need to actually get myself some canvases I'm I usually like to make my own canvases where I'll stretch them over because it's just cheaper uh, get the, the uh, fabric stretch them over on some wood and staple them and super awesome and easy <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You're on the other side of the world where it's blazing summer currently. Which is funny to think about here because we always associate it cold, but it's opposite on that side of the world. Same for you, I guess. Kind of out of the way. It's my lovely professional palette here with a paper towel. Isn't it awesome? Got a little bit of the sniffles this morning. I think my allergies are acting up, so might be a little sniffly, but I'll try my best not to irritate you too much. <laughs> okay, so I thought I'd do a fun little egg because it was yellow. So I was like, why not? We're gonna do like a fun little egg dude on here. Let's see if we can just kind of white out a section. Make him a round little bubbly egg guy. Uh, I'm gonna be using a combination media today, so I'm gonna be doing marker and paint. Um, it's a special kind of marker. It's a fabric marker. They look like this. You can get them for, I think I got a whole entire pack for like under 10 bucks, so they're not bad at all. I'm not honestly sure if Copic made uh, some fabric markers. That would be pretty awesome if they did. And believe it or not, I've done stuff with Sharpie before that has lasted better than some of the quote unquote fabric markers, <laughs> which is awful. It's like, it's supposed to be a fabric marker. Big old egg. Why not make him happy? He's gotta be happy. Like maybe crazy weird happy even. For my next creative, I've started to kind of go through what I'm wanting to do for my cosplays this year. I usually try to do at least one in a year. You know, as, as I've started doing all my other things such as comics and the uh, books and whatnot, my uh, creative side suffered a little bit, but I'm kind of hoping to get some cosplay done this year, at least one of them. I was looking at possibly one Matt suggested that I thought was kind of neat was Sif. I thought, I thought they always, you know, they make her armor so plain. I always wanted to do something a little more fun. So I thought possibly do a female version of Thor as well. Another one I, I thought about was Samus because I, I like to do female characters that are strong and mostly covered, which is a big problem. Um, I usually like the more modest and or badass looking characters like Motoko from Ghost in the Shell. So I thought I'd probably do that. And I need to finish out my lighting for Motoko. Uh, so we can get a little side over here. Make his pillowy soft egg. Yeah, I was thinking about Samus as well. Samus would be fun. 
definitely have to do a lighting kit with Samus. And that uh, Samus alone would probably take a few months. I think the longest project I've ever worked on with cosplay took me about four months to complete. And it was gradient dye and oh dear lord, it just took forever. But it was worth it. It was lots of fun. If you're in, by chance, the Dallas area in March, I'll be attending WowCon. And WowCon is short for Women of WonderCon. I'll have to actually get a link up here in a little bit. You can Google them. And uh, basically it's a convention for women uh, in the creative industry and promoting one another. There'll also be panels and booths. You can check out a bunch of local women in the Dallas area. It'll be a lot of fun and I think they mentioned something about breaking the record for the most cosplayers of uh, Wonder Woman so might be kind of fun. I believe it's going to be held at the Dallas Library this year which just recently got renovated and is huge and gorgeous so we're excited. Right, yeah, pillowy cloud looking egg, eglantine guy going here. <laughs> Makes me happy. Every Sunday I do this from 10 a.m. to noon usually and uh, last time we did Fortnite. This coming Sunday we're gonna try to finish out part three of Life is Strange. I'd like to finish out that series so we can all start uh, playing something else. I was thinking on Witcher 3 since it's gotten a lot of reviews. And no, I haven't played it. I know I'm super late to the game, but everybody tells me it's awesome and I should play it. Or we'll finish out uh, Evil Within 2, which we started, I guess it's been a couple months ago now. And I started getting excited over Destiny, so we played that which I was slightly sad about, but I heard they actually patched through some newer stuff that's kind of neat, so we'll see. Uh, oh my gosh, are you serious? You have to pay for it? Oh my gosh, that's, that's silly. It's so silly. Honestly, it's a disturbing trend how um, video games are doing it now where you have to pay for everything. You pay for the main game and then you have to pay for more stuff and it's just it's ridiculous. It's like if I paid $60 then why do I have to pay another 120 to enjoy the game or whatever the expansion is going to be, you know? Obviously I'm exaggerating, but it's like EA and all these companies are just making it ridiculous. When I can play something like Fortnite for hours on end and have tons of fun and not have to pay for all that junk. Now, you have to be careful with suggesting Fortnite, though, because Fortnite also has uh, the loot llamas and, yeah, I mean, you don't have to buy them. I play, you know, just fine without it. And it's tons of fun to sit around and shoot the shit with people online, trade, all kinds of fun stuff, so we get ourselves, I think we've just about got enough here going on, maybe I'll round out his bottom right here, he <laughs> his bottom, his little fanny. So kind of got sidetracked a little bit, but we were talking about earlier uh, what you can find my, on my website, the comics and the audiobooks. Um, audio stories or audiobooks, I try to do a few of those a year. And they have sound effects, voice acting, all that fun stuff. Uh, my comics I do weekly. They're every Tuesday, unless I have something special going on, which I try to announce beforehand, but... <laughs> I've been known to not sometimes. Maybe dry just a little bit before we start using our fabric markers on him. All right, we're gonna give that a chance to dry. 
touch up this just a little bit. Looks like it's slightly sparse here, and this is kind of where I'm wanting this little pillowy egg body. I think I have a slight obsession with the word pillowy this morning. Pillowy. I always forget this darn camera just mirrors everything, so I, when I first try to twist it one way, it goes the other on the camera, and I'm like, no, why? It's not what I wanted. Okay, so we're gonna use yellow for eglantine, and we're gonna use maybe this black. I'm gonna do a fun little mouth form. Use a red. And we'll do some little blushies. Let's see, we're gonna nice. Maybe lighter pink here. These are the ones I like to use for the more pastel y, which they're supposed to be bright, but when you use them over the paint and over the darker color, it, they kind of turn more pastel y, which you'll see on my Instagram. His body here, hopefully. No, it doesn't look like it's coming off too much. I don't want to spread white everywhere. Outline. Eglantine is what Berwin decided his name would be, so we're gonna we're gonna go with that. It's gonna stick. And I just outline his outside. Dun, dun, dun. Just to kind of give him a fun little darker shade here. Thanks for joining me this Sunday, guys. I always enjoy kind of relaxing and chatting on Sundays, so it's nice to just kind of get to talk to you. <laughs> Even though Nightbot is being an ass butt. <laughs> this really is kind of reminding me of a cloud, but it's fine. We will make him an egg. Cloud egg? Ooh, cloud egg. That would be fun. But also gross, because if you think about it, like what would what would an egg rain? It'd be really smelly on the streets. So next Sunday. We are going to do Life is Strange Part 3, kind of finish that section out, which is what I normally do on Sundays, but every once in a while, like today, we are doing Voter's Choice, and people voted for painting, so that is what we're doing. And that is what we are doing. Super serious low voice. I am so excited to start doing my audio books again. I love doing those every year and my East versus West podcasts. I wish I could do more of those, but you know, if I de dedicated too much time to that, I wouldn't be able to get my comics done and my books and my favorite part, which are my audio stories. So. Unfortunately, I have to choose sometimes with my creative demons. <laughs> the fun little guys, though. So I might sketch this next part out just a little bit, but move him up a little so you guys can get a better view of what I'm doing here. Let's see. Make a little pillowy guy, I think. Half here. Pillowy, pillowy, pillowy. It's just stuck in my brain this morning. I'll go ahead and sketch just a little bit here. Let's make our egg, egg dude. Not a lot of people know this, but what I tend to struggle with with drawing 
isn't the more like slightly what I call surreal or more realistic. I actually struggle with cute, like drawing cute things. And a lot of people don't realize it takes a different set of skills to draw chibi sort of things or cutesy things. A little less flat. There we go. Because chibi is cute. Okay. See, the great thing about what I love painting on my PC is all the different layers you can do, but I'm trying to challenge myself with these a little more to where actually having to draw things out. So I still feel like he needs just a little more height on the top of his bubble. There we go. And see this, this part of the thing is when you're on Photoshop, you can just kind of erase stuff. But here it challenges you to be able to actually draw the line and figure out where that line should go right away. So learn how to draw more quickly. And I've been challenging myself with my comics as well online where I'm trying to not make them so detailed and that's so hard for me because I'm a very detailed driven person. So my challenge a lot each week with my weekly comics on Tuesdays is to try to draw them more quickly. Um, I'll probably do, I've been having a lot of people ask about my keto recipes. Um, those of you aren't familiar with what keto is, it's a diet in which it's very low carb. Um, I don't have any breads or anything like that. I usually make keto breads, which are done from nut flours like almond, or I do coconut because obviously some people have nut allergies, so I try to also include that in my keto recipes. If you go on my cagrayson.com, which I can link here in just a second, you can find my recipes on there. I just recently did a Cornish hen recipe with cornbread stuffing. Uh, if you go on Reddit often, I'm on there and I also post them on our keto recipes. So my next um, baking one for keto, I'll go ahead and put up a vote on Twitter and you guys can decide what you'd like me to make this time. I usually end up doing desserts because people like to see how keto desserts are made and they can be rather difficult. I guess a little less than a week ago now was my birthday this past Tuesday and we did a keto cake. And I made this um, buttercream icing that actually was just straight up buttercream and I'm kind of learning how uh, keto icings work, which is the biggest thing I used to miss about pastries and desserts I would eat. You know, obviously I would have the gluten-free desserts, but they weren't low carb. So now I'm learning how to make low carb desserts that actually have decent icing. So. I'll have to share that process with all of you guys. And we'll do another keto segment. Bubbly little yolk. Wee. Okay. Now let's do some little arms, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Have them little arms come up. Little fingers. Little arms. <laughs> I'm having way too much drawing this. Like way too much fun rather. My brain skipped a thought for a second. Uh, if you guys would like to vote on my next keto recipe, you can do that on my Twitter, which I just linked. And we can have a fun day of cooking together. Look at his other little fingers here. Concentration. Ooh, he's got a fat finger in the middle. I like it. We're gonna leave that. <laughs> I 
Okay. Fat finger in the middle. Middle. I'm gonna leave it there. Yay! Alright, I guess we'll give him some little happy eyes. Let that dry, I can feel it's still just a bit tacky in the center, so. I'm super excited to see what this is gonna look like once we're all finished. And I'll probably post it on my Instagram and Twitter. Cause I, I tend to notice people follow one but not the other, sometimes both, depends. And I do have a Tumblr, but I usually just link, uh, link up my stuff from Instagram on there or my website, because I really don't, I don't get on Tumblr that often at all. Though I heard it's actually a uh, pretty decent spot for comic artists and artists alike. I used to go on DeviantArt all the time, but when it got just completely saturated, it wasn't, it wasn't a fun place to talk with people anymore. It just got really dead. Yeah, happy little eyes. I think he should have teeth, like a little tooth. A tooth. Ah, there we go. Awesome. And since this camera is gonna flip what you're seeing, um, at the end I'll make sure to flip it around so you guys can get a look at what he looks like. And I'll post some pictures too. Oh yeah, we're gonna give him maybe some little blushies too. Some happy blushies. Yeah, like this. Oh, happy blushies. Cause he's a happy egg. You guys probably can't hear this, but it's making like a slight squeaking sound. Let me put the pen down. There we go. No, yay! Okay. If anyone's interested, I'll go ahead and put him up for sale online. A little blush. Little blush. Okay. And since we're kind of giving it that thick black border on the outside, I think we should go ahead and outline him in black because it just would be more matchy-matchy. Today we are making the voter's choice, which was a drawing and painting. And you can vote once a month on one of the creatives that I do. Next Sunday we're going to be doing Life is Strange, episode 3. We might even get in through some of 4 as well. Hopefully we will. So I feel like we're kind of getting near the end of three. Today we're doing little Eglantine, this little egg. Okay, so I think in order to make his cute little tooth up here pop, we're gonna go ahead and fill in his mouth. Oh, no, that's too wide, too wide. That way his little tooth kind of pops out. There's one little shiny happy egg tooth, I bet. I bet you didn't know that eggs have teeth. It's true. At least this one does. It's a magical chicken fetus. You'll notice um, my comics on Tuesday they usually have <laughs> a very sarcastic overtone. Uh, sometimes I like to do cuter ones, but most of mine are heavy with the sarcasm. I usually like to talk about my life or things that I can kind of relate to, which is mostly unrelatable to most people, so. <laughs> I'm a total weirdo. All right. Happy egg! Yay! All right. Let's fill him in. Give him his eggy, yolky color. 
I might have to blend some colors to get the color I'm looking for. Let's, we'll see here. Let's see how dark my orange is. I'm just nervous to use this because I know how dark these colors naturally are. So I'm gonna make them too dark. We'll take a little, take a look here. Yeah, I feel like that would be too dark, definitely. I'd have to go over with my other orange marker and try that. There we go. Kind of center him. Ha ha! He's like, yeah! Let's see how this guy paints. Might be able to put this over the yellow. Let's see. Yeah. That's closer to the color I was wanting. That's much better. <laughs> We're kind of pulling these like interesting little facial lines out of the black that I'm totally keeping. Because it's, it's pretty funny. I like it. Staying. <laughs> he looks like he has part of a little mustache right here, which is hilarious. Which you probably can't see so well on the camera, but I'll hold it up here in a second. Might be able to see it. There we go. Now he's gotten that more fun orange yogi color. Maybe up here on the top. We got some down here too. I'm, just, I'm nervous. I'm like, I, I, I'm gonna sketch this first. I just, you know, I don't write that often. So like learning how to write Pretty. It's like nerve. <laughs> nerve wracking. So we can kind of flip this guy. And he says, I'm excited to be here yay our finished little guy here <laughs> might go through and maybe touch up a few spots after he dries but I'll post him online in just a little bit you can take a look at him if you'd like to take him home just give me a message Thanks for joining me this Sunday with our Voter's Choice Creative for painting. I'm C.A. Grayson, and thank you so much for joining me today. You guys have a great rest of your Sunday, and I'll see you Tuesday on Fortnite for the PVE. We'll be talking about skill trees, building, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So I will see you then. Until then, have fun, guys.